The eye looks like a wonderfully complex organ with its many retinal layers and different chambers. So how does such an organ form during fetal development? The short answer, biology origami. Cell layers folding in on each other and twisting until you end up with an eye. The long answer is the rest of this video. I want to tell the story through histology slides, allowing you to look at actual examples of developing organs rather than schematics. To do this I've used an excellent resource, the Mouse E Atlas, and the link is in the description. So let's have a look at how the eye develops from this to this. The video is organised into chapters, so if you want to skip ahead to a certain stage, just check out the description. If you want a refresher on histology of the normal eye, there's a video available on the channel too. First of all, let's explain three words. Ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Secondly, I'm going to break my ethos of using histology slides right away and show schematics, but just for this little section, because otherwise you'll be looking at a whole load of cells that look extremely similar. One of the early stages of the embryo development is the blastula, essentially a single-layered hollow sphere of cells. The blastula undergoes a process called gastrulation, which culminates in the development of three cell layers. Gastrulation is differentiation and arrangement of that single layer into three different cell lineages. The ectoderm, which will form all nervous tissue and epithelial tissue such as the skin. The mesoderm, which will form all connective tissues like muscles and bones as well as the kidneys and reproductive tracts. And finally the endoderm that will form the gastrointestinal system, respiratory tract and urinary bladder. In short, ectoderm on the outside, mesoderm in the middle, and endoderm on the inside. Once these three layers are established, our first biologic origami fold takes place in a process called neurulation. A portion of the dorsal surface ectoderm, called the neural plate, invaginates. That means it folds downwards and inwards to form a little pocket. The pocket closes to form an enclosed tube within the mesoderm. This is the neural tube and will become everything in the nervous system. At the front end, the neural tube begins to swell, the first sign of the brain developing. This is where the eye will begin to develop. So now we can get into the histology. This is a section through the front end of a developing mouse embryo at 10 days gestation. Here is the neural tube, a part called the telencephalic vesicle that will form the brain. On either side, there is an outpouching. This is the optic vesicle, connected to the telencephalic vesicle via the optic stalk. So far, so simple. Zooming in, we can see the optic vesicle has grown through the mesoderm and is contacting the surface ectoderm. This area of ectoderm is called the lens placode and will end up inside the eye forming the lens. Just half a day later, at 10.5 days of gestation, there's been progress. The contact between ectoderm and neural ectoderm has stimulated the lens placo to fold into the optic vesicle. The optic vesicle becomes cup-shaped, with the lens pit and a chunk of mesoderm forming the contents. So this is called the optic cup. There are now two layers of the optic cup, an inner layer and an outer layer. Notice that the optic cup is still connected to the telencephalic vesicle via the optic stalk. Another half a day later, at 11 days gestation, and here's what the eye looks like. The lens has fully invaginated and pinched itself off from the overlying ectoderm to form the lens vesicle. This means that the lens is made entirely of epithelium. The lens capsule that will form is actually the basement membrane of the epithelium. There are two further consequences to this way of forming a lens. Firstly, any cells that are made in the lens remain there for life. Like the rings of a tree, the epithelial cells will continue to divide and condense into a more and more solid tissue, eventually forming opacities called cataracts in the formerly crystal clear lens. Secondly, the developing immune system will never be exposed to proteins from the lens while it's learning to differentiate self-protein from foreign protein. This means that any lens rupture in later life will be greeted by an enthusiastic immune response to what the system considers a foreign antigen. Meanwhile, the optic cup continues to develop. The inner layer is becoming thicker. This inner layer will eventually form the neural layers of the retina, while the outer layer will form the retinal pigmented epithelium. You can see there's still a gap between the two called the intraretinal space. This gap never fills with strong connective tissue, 
and the attachment relies on interdigitation between the retinal pigmented epithelium and overlying photoreceptors. This relatively weak connection is the reason why the retina is prone to detachment. At 11.5 to 12 days of gestation, you can really see how the inner layer of the optic cup is thickening, getting ready to form the six layers of the neural retina, while the outer layer remains as a single cell layer and will remain so for the rest of the animal's life. By 12 to 12.5 days, there's something more recognisable as an eye. You can see the forebrain developing in the middle of the head. This is still connected to the optic cup by the optic stalk, which will eventually become the optic nerve. Zooming in on the left eye, something has begun to happen to the lens vesicle. The posterior ectoderm has begun to thicken and bulge into the lumen of the lens vesicle. We'll keep a close eye on this as it develops. The next layer of ectoderm over the lens vesicle will become the corneal epithelium. At the edges, we can see that mesoderm has grown down between the lens vesicle and the cornea. This will form the corneal stroma, endothelium and decimets membrane. Another feature we can see here is the primitive blood vessels breaching through the inner and outer layers of the optic cup. These are there to nourish the developing lens and retina. Eventually, this breach in the optic cup will form the optic disc, where the optic nerve and blood vessels enter the retina. Zooming ahead to 13 days, we can see some more progress. The outer layer of the optic cup has become pigmented, now well on its way to becoming the retinal pigmented epithelium. The posterior lens has completed its migration forward, creating a solid tissue that will continue to develop as lens fibres are produced. You'll notice that the posterior lens is now largely without cells, while the anterior end maintains an epithelial lining. This is the arrangement in the mature eye as well. As we head through days 14 and 15, not much is going to change in terms of structure, but those structures that are there will continue to develop and become more differentiated. In this section from 15.5 days of gestation, we can see both eyes connected to the brain by recognisable optic nerve. At higher magnification, we can see neuropil from the optic nerve extending over the inner layer of the optic cup to form the innermost layer of the retina. The posterior chamber is filled with blood vessels called the hyaloid vessels. These continue to nourish the developing tissue, especially the lens. The inner layer of the optic cup is beginning to form layers. In this section, there is separation of the inner and outer layers, but this is just an artefact and testament to the fragility of the connections between these cells. Also of note is the beginning of the eyelids which are growing down at the edges of the corneal ectoderm. It's only a few days before the mouse pup will be born, and we're still missing the iris. Even in this fetus at 16 days of gestation, there's not much in the way of an iris at all. We can see the eyelids have grown down and fused over the eye. This is to protect the developing eye after birth until it's finally ready to be exposed to light. Around the eye, the mesoderm is developing into the ocular muscles. At the junction between the corneal stroma and the retinal pigmented epithelium, we can see the mesoderm beginning to extend down. This is the beginning of the developing iris. Now at 16.5 days of gestation, we can see nearly all of the mature eye structures. There are the fused eyelids over the cornea, the beginnings of an anterior chamber separating the lens and the cornea with, with mesoderm growing down at the edges to form the iris. Behind the lens, the posterior chamber contains fewer blood vessels and the retina is far more differentiated. Around the globe, mesoderm continues to develop into the choroid, sclera and ocular muscles. This is the last section we have at 17.5 days of gestation. Mouse gestation is around 20 days, so the eye will continue to develop and mature the structures we've seen for a further 16 days. When the mouse pup is around 13 days old, they open their eyes to reveal, hopefully, a functional eye. So that's how the eye forms during fetal development. Here's a quick table showing the embryonal layers and structures that form the different components of the mature eye. I hope the explanation was clear. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want a summary of histology of the mature eye, I made a video on that which you can watch here. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.